Uh, I was a little frustrated the other day. I thought I could just put this scope on, go out on the back deck, put it on the sandbags, and get it zeroed in and be, you know, firing away. But it didn't work that good. Should have taken my time, come out to the shop. What is happening, people? So <clears throat> we have a little dilemma. So this is my new uh, Savage Model 93 22 Magnum. Been wanting one of these 22 Magnums for a while. So the other day, caught it on sale and I bought it. So this scope is a 4x12 Bushnell low-end model scope and it came off an old 30 alt 6 So I topped this 22 Magnum with this scope. Used to uh, order some Weaver bases, and uh, their low profile should have got the uh, medium profile. This scope comes with adjustable objective, and as you can notice, you see no daylight right here between the scope and the bar barrel. This adjustable objective is actually touching it. Got it mounted, bore sighted it. I knew I had an issue when I bore sighted it. So all of the adjustment to the turning to the left is out. Can't zero this scope. So I'm going to try a couple of things and hopefully this video may help you if you run into this same situation. So this mount does not come with a right to left windage. So you can't get the scope exactly true with the straight with the barrel and as I'm standing here looking at it I can tell that this scope is not true with the barrel don't know if you can see that but it's sitting off to the left hand side so I'm gonna try a couple of things I'm gonna actually put a shim up underneath this scope to actually raise it up and I'm going to remove these screws here you can see these I'm gonna remove these screws and I'm actually going to flip-flop these and put them on this side to see if it'll align the scope uh, more straighter. Because this screw tightens and it pulls the scope actually this way. So, I'm going to try those couple of things. And I'm also going to re-center this scope uh, right to left. And I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. So, we're going to do those few things and see if we can still utilize this scope. Anyway, be back in a minute. So the first thing I need to do is to remove these Allen screws on the top of these rings and take this scope off. I actually see what the issue is. And I'm going to hold this up and I'm not so sure. So I'm going to hold this up to the camera and see if you can see it. So these are off. If you look, and I don't know if you can see these two rings but they are crooked very very crooked you see one sitting to one side and one sitting to the other no wonder that no wonder that scope can you see that that's one of our issues right there so I'm gonna take these off and recheck these bases reseal them. so boom anyway our issue was in these bases uh, this base was actually turned, there's a little number on it, I think it's 16. This base, this 16 was on this side. This rear base that you see here was on the opposite sides, which created the bases to be like this. I didn't notice that uh, when I put these on. Anyway, they're nice and straight. I'm uh, not sure if you can see that. So now they're both nice and flat on the top. And I lost one of the screws in the bases down in the floor somewhere. Spent about 30 minutes looking for that thing. You ever done that before? God, um, aggravating. Anyway, uh, so now I'm gonna mount these rings back on. So as you can see, they're just uh, weaver style mounts. First one put on a little bar up underneath it. 
goes on the front. Make sure the little tab on the side catches up underneath the base. Oh yeah, that looks much better. So I've just hand tightened these. I hadn't really cranked them down with the screwdriver yet. But anyway, looking down these two ring bases now, it is nice, nice and straight. Uh, no more cock to the side. So I'm feeling much, much better about that now. So let's lay the scope in here and see looks like we still we still are going to touch so while I have this off I'm going to put me a shim here and here to raise that scope up just a little bit and I got to go get me a shim I'll be right back So basically what I've did, I've cut me a piece of plastic out of this, uh, this is what some bases, uh, a set of bases come in, just a piece of plastic. And I am going to fit the first piece that I've cut inside the scope base. Okay, <clears throat> so before I put this scope, as you see, back on this rifle. I'm going to center this scope back the way it was from the factory. And how I'm going to do that is I will take this screwdriver and this is screwed in this uh, windage this windage adjustment is screwed in it's maxed out all the way in. Maybe I can turn it a little bit. So I'm going to count the times that I turn this till it gets all the way out to this outer edge here. So if I turn it 10 times, I will go back in five and that should center. So I'm going to count the times that I turn this scope all the way out. So I'm looking at it. The right to left emblem, the left emblem is straight up. So, and I'm, most of the time I do this on a scope, if I take a scope off and put it on another rifle, I go ahead and zero this scope back center. That gets the, that gets the windage and the elevation back to the center of the scope so you have more adjustment right to left versus taking this scope and putting it on uh, a rifle and you may have, just like this, I didn't have a lot of adjustment to adjust to the left. And when I put it on this rifle, I needed more and I didn't have it. So, if you take the time and set the scope back to as center as you possibly can, it may avoid some of these problems that I have. So, hope that helps. Let's count these and see how many we got. If I forced it, it may pop out. Some of them will actually come all the way out. So, that's eight. So. I know I went from all the way maximum left to all the way maximum right. So now I'm going to go four complete turns, which will be four, and that should be half. That should put our windage back to the center. Four. Now, the elevation adjustment looks to be a little high. So in order for me, it looks closer to high. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna back this off and continue to go up with it till it maxes out and then count it down. Normally you'll see the adjustment on a scope will be about eight to 10 revolutions right to left and up and down. Usually, usually eight's about right on, on most scopes. Don't know what that equates to in inches at 100 yards, but that's typically what I've found. So I'm just going to back 
this one all the way out. No need to count it because I don't know, it's not maxed out. So, you notice that's maxed out. And you notice that the up, not sure if you can see that or not, the up is straight up and down. So I'm gonna count this back, anticipate it to be eight. And that is just about a full eight turns back down. We'll back it up four turns and we should be back center with our elevation. Now this scope is back to uh, center on up and down. So let's get this thing mounted. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a couple of these started. And I know you're wondering, why in the world they don't just carry this thing to the gunsmith? You need to be able to do this for yourself. Uh, because you never know, when you may be in the field and there's no gunsmith around. So you should be able to do some of these things for yourself. Again, on these back screws, they are just tight enough so I can turn the scope right to left. Now, I know you can't see me do this, but I want the crosshairs as straight up and down as I can. And one method to do that is, when this is loose, to use the door jam. If you're sitting in the house, make sure the gun is unloaded, is to hold it flat in your hand as so and to use the crosshairs and look and move in and out of a window jam or a door jam. Hopefully your door jam is uh, square. And you move it in and out and see which reticle touches first. If the reticle is turned this way, of course the top of the reticle will hit the door jam first. And you I'm looking at this and That looks pretty darn close. So let's tighten the scope down. So as I'm tightening this down, see your space here? And your space on this side? Make sure you tighten these screws down at the appropriate amount on each side. You don't want one side down tight and the other side uh, up this far. So take your time on this. I go like a quarter turn, I move to this side and go a quarter turn. Okay, another thing. Elevation on the top, windage on the right. I have seen, I've had guys give me a call. Sam, you've got to get over to my house. Tomorrow's opening day of gun season or black powder season can't get my scope zeroed in, right over, shoot the gun. First, I couldn't figure out what it was. The scope was shooting all over the place. And uh, anyway, after a few minutes, I happened to look down. He had his windage was on top and the elevation was on the side. So every time I went to move up and down, I was moving it right to left. Anyway, loosened the scope up again. We were out in the field. Friday afternoon, opening day of black powder season was the next morning. Got the scope loose, spun it up. I centered the scope right there on the back of the tailgate of the pickup truck, centered the scope back to zero, bore sighted it, fired it one time, and we were within two inches of the bullseye. Three more rounds, we was right where we needed to be, and he was off and hunting. So that's why I say it's very important for you to be able to do some of these field things. Now, after, so you remember we put the shims in it. So now we're gonna take a look and see if we got the clearance on the scope. So, maybe you could see that. Uh, so there is our clearance on our scope just barely off of the barrel is where we want to be and this now turns freely and I don't have to worry about that scope 
interfering with the barrel. So that is probably a 30 second. So that's close, but I'm happy with it. Anyway, I was going to use, you can use for a shim, let me cover that. You can use for a shim, you, I've used uh, milk pieces of plastic, a milk jug. Uh, this was just a package cover for the bases that it come in. I actually was going to use a drink bottle, but after looking at the thickness of the drink bottle, I didn't figure it would give us the clearance. And I'm really glad I didn't use a drink bottle. The plastic on a drink bottle is pretty thin. So anyway, hey, I'm tickled. So I'm getting ready to bore sight this thing and see how close it is now. Now, remember bore sighting is, I am gonna pick an object 10 feet to 10 yards away, and I'm gonna get that object right in the center of this bore. I will raise my head up and look at my crosshairs, and I will begin to adjust my scope, keeping the target or whatever I'm looking at in the center of this bore and watching these crosshairs go towards whatever that I'm looking at. So that puts the scope pretty close, not exact, it gets the scope pretty close to the center of the bore of the barrel. If you noticed, from the bore, center of the bore of this barrel, to the center of the scope is over an inch tall. So the scope is above this, so we have to line the scope with the bore of the barrel upwards. So I just finished bore sighting this, looking through the barrel, centering a uh, knot in a piece of the trim in the center of this bore and looking through the scope. I'm not even going to move the scope. That's how close the crosshairs are actually on that knot. If anything, the scope will have to be lowered, but it really looks good. I was attempted to move it down, but after looking at it three or four times, I'm just going to shoot this thing and it should be really close on paper at 25 yards. Of course, I'm going to start at 25 and get it dialed in pretty good uh, right on the bullseye and then I'll move out to 50, 75, of course of 100 yards. And I'll do a review when I do that on this weapon. I thought this was something that this might help you guys in the field. Uh, when you run into issues like this, uh, I was a little frustrated the other day. I thought I could just put this scope on, go out on the back deck, put it on the sandbags, and get it zeroed in and be, you know, firing away. But it didn't work that good. Should have taken my time, come out to the shop, and uh, looked at things a little closer, took my time, and actually put this scope on there. But anyway, hey, guys, I hope this helps you out. And remember, it's a wild life, and I'll see you in the field.